morning on this rather blustery day. A couple of notices before we begin. Um, may I please ask if you are able uh, to all leave by the north door in that corner. Obviously, if you have a mobility issue, please feel free to use the shorter route, but it helps us to keep you all safely distanced. If you wish to make a financial offering, we have plates by both doors and uh, Donna is in the far corner with the card reader, should you wish to make a donation in that way. And the lastly, I'm sorry, but you still can't sing. We have to leave it to these lovely people here to sing on our behalf, but hopefully soon. May I ask you to stand, please, for our opening hymn. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. And as is our want here, let us take a moment of quiet reflection before we start our worship together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Hear now the words of grace. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect and readings appointed for this fourth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. The first reading this morning is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and the elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please stand for our gospel reading? Hear now the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, as I said, and traditionally it's known as Good Shepherd Sunday because of that reading. But it's also Vocation Sunday. More about that later. Today marks a turning point in our journey through Eastertide. After three weeks of looking back at historical accounts of the resurrection, we now turn back to the person of Jesus, to his word and teachings 
to try and understand the man and the example of his life. Now, illustrations of shepherds and sheep abound in the gospel. And I did wonder if they abounded in this church in the windows, but they don't particularly. But we need to take care that we understand the meaning of shepherds and sheep. They were common then in first century. But tell me, when did you last see a shepherd or any sheep in the middle of Weybridge? Not for a good long time. And if we do talk about sheep, we might think more about the cuddly, sanitised, fluffy things we might see on TV, particularly pertaining to children, rather than the more smelly reality of a living, breathing animal. So, shepherds in the first century. There's a small account. We have flocks of sheep roaming the hills. Well, and we shepherds, we live with them the whole time. We go wherever they go. We protect them from predators. We keep them together. Being a shepherd means days and days outside in the middle of nowhere. And it's mucky and it's dirty and we smell. Not much money in it either, really. And everyone turns up their noses at us when we get back home. No one perhaps wants to be a shepherd, but you need us. You need wool, you need meat. And I guess we wouldn't have a job otherwise. We're the lowest of the low, as other people see us. But we know our own sheep. I can describe all my sheep. I know what they look like and what they sound like. And they follow me on these hills. They know my voice as much as I know their individual bear. Sometimes we find sheep that are lost and alone, but we take them in, we add them to our flock. They get to learn me and I learn them. I will look after them. It's not an easy job, this looking after sheep, you know. There are all sorts of things that can go wrong. There are lots of people and animals who want to do harm to my sheep and even to me. It means this job is a bit iffy sometimes and I just don't want to think about what that can mean. Okay, that was a bit of fun. But Jesus is talking about his relationship with God and ours with him as being between a shepherd and his sheep. And you can see that that would have been quite shocking and a very odd thing for people to hear. God, Jesus and shepherds are very different. And it would take a great deal of thought to get their heads around the shock of that comparison. But it does make sense. There are three things I think that mean it makes sense. Firstly, a shepherd would know his sheep individually, intimately and they can recognise each other. And Jesus says that, I know my own and my own know me. And secondly, he's talking about other sheep to be found and added to the flock, becoming known one to another and following the same shepherd. Jesus says, I must bring them also. He's talking about bringing other people to join us with our faith. And thirdly, a shepherd would willingly give his life to ensure the safety of his sheep. Jesus' death was laying down his own life for us and for the love of us. Now, secular thought could say that Jesus' life and mission was a bit of a failure. He died on that cross, his friends crying, and even Jesus' last words of, it is finished, might underline that. But if he lay down his life in order to take it up again, it turns everything upside down. This shepherd of ours, this crucified Jesus, through his resurrection, allows the power of the Holy Spirit to be working through us all, even today. So, on Vocation Sunday, I said I'd get there, is a day when the church prays for all vocations, all who are called by God, that they both hear and listen to God's call on their lives. 
Vocations over the years have become known as things like priests, teachers, nurses, doctors, nuns, monks, etc. But it's not just those roles. Everyone is being called by God. I firmly believe that. We all have individual gifts and talents that we can use on behalf of others for the glory of God. Sometimes it's pretty obvious what these are. And I do remember a fourth Sunday of Easter many years ago, as we had various parishioners standing up and wielding the things that showed their talents. So computers to children's toys, flutes to a first aid kit, shovels to a sewing basket. Great fun, but it really showed clearly how an immense range of skills can be found within a small group of people. But your talents and your skills might not be obvious to you, but they might be to someone else. Someone might say, I bet you could do this, would you try? I suspect we all have a story of someone asking us each to try something, and then maybe it became a passion or a skill. Now, I wonder, can you put your hand up if you share a talent or skill with us here at St. James? It's quite a few of you. You lot do. You all share a talent and a skill. And many of you do too. Yes? Okay. Maybe that's not all of us. But how many of us pray for St. James, for our parish during the week? That will be most of us. That is a talent or a skill. It's not necessarily a doing thing. It can be an internal thing as well. So, it's not also about just this church, it's not also about just Sundays, it's about the whole week, it's how we live our lives. How do you find that calling on your life, whether it's a big thing or a small thing, or indeed you are already doing what you are called to do? Maybe though, you might be called to step out in faith into something new, following that shepherd's voice. If you've still got that small voice that's prodding, maybe, perhaps you can, maybe you could, then please come and talk to one of us. Pray about it. Keep listening for his voice. After all, you never know what sort of journey you may embark upon. Amen. Would you please stand as we declare our faith together in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Let us now pray for the church and for the world and give thanks to God for his kindness to us all. Let us pray. We bid a blessing on our Archbishop Justin and our bishops Andrew and Joe in this Diocese of Guildford. We pray for all church leaders throughout the world 
as they manage situations and changes and regulations while still being the church for the people around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world where conflict and strife seems ever more around. We pray for all those seeking peace, for the organisations working in the midst of conflict, trying to negotiate to bring sides together. And we pray for all those organisations that are trying to provide food and shelter, water and vaccines throughout the world for peacekeepers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish of Weybridge, for all who live or work or socialise in this parish. For our businesses, trying still to keep going despite the constraints. For our schools and nurseries, providing a spot of normality for our children. For all the places in which we find ourselves in this town, where perhaps we might be able to share our faith with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. We pray that we can hear your voice as our shepherd and that we can discern what you wish us to do with our lives. And we pray that you will help us to help others to also find the direction for their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are unwell in mind or body or spirit. For those on our parish list and in a moment of quiet for those known only to ourselves. We pray that they may find comfort in your presence. We pray for their families and friends, for those who care for them, for wise decisions and for endurance through sometimes long journeys. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died among whom Richard Chown, priest, and in the year's mind, Fred Parsons and George Button. Rest eternal grant to them, Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for all those who mourn. May, their, may your peace be part of their experience, Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your son our savior jesus christ amen would you please stand the risen christ came and stood among his disciples and said peace be with you then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Alleluia. Please share a suitably distant sign of peace one with another.
as the grain once scattered on the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into this kingdom. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. But chiefly we are bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by rising to life again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to them. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the almighty resurrection and the glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs> 